this morning I'll talk about uh, how Korean government is involved in the development of 5G. There is no real secret about it, mm -hmm. but uh, when it comes to a big national project like uh, 4G or 5G, it requires very tight cooperation between the government, industry, research institutes, and universities together. Now, the government should have a very detailed plan first and then support industries, not control them, you know, and uh, give some incentives to them so that they may uh, participate in the project actively and uh, incentives give uh, the operators or industries uh, some benefits when they come earlier than others. Well, Korea has done this kind of things many times. One of the examples is um, uh, 1980, they developed uh, uh, electronic switches. They used to buy electronic switches from abroad, 100% of them. And uh, in the 1980s, when they developed the uh, electronic switch successfully, suddenly the price from outside went down by half. Uh, that's what is happening. In the 1990s, they developed the CDMA in this way with Qualcomm. And Korea became the first country uh, who uh, uh, implemented the CDMA technology for their uh, mobile phone. Now, 4G was a good example too. Uh, LG U Plus got into the project a little bit earlier than others and they got the benefit of it. Uh, in just three years, the revenue went up 50%, subscription and ARPU all went up. So uh, LG Plus got so much benefit out of 4G. Now let's go for uh, 5G now. Uh, uh, Korean government believed that 5G is the key driver to fourth industrial revolution. If you see the slide, uh, of uh, 5G commercial schedule in Korea. They announced uh, the plan of 5G frequent spectrum allocation in May 2018. And uh, they issued um, uh, 5G radio system qualification on the same month. And uh, they did the auction and uh, issued uh, 5G uh, spectrum to three operators. And uh, operators emitted 5G power end of uh, uh, 2018, December. Now, actual commercial service started uh, April of 2019. It's a 5G commercial service, a frequency band at 28 gigahertz. Uh, government gave uh, one gigahertz band to each operator, which will be used for hotspots and uh, special areas. Uh, we don't have any uh, sites for 28 gigahertz yet. Also at 3.5 gigahertz, they gave 80 to 100 megahertz each, and uh, it will be uh, used for nationwide. Of course, LG U Plus has um, 50 megahertz bandwidth for 4G at uh, 2.6, 2.1, and 850 megahertz. Now, using that spectrum, the government really pushed hard to develop 5G uh, because they thought 5G is the key driver to force industrial revolution. They established 5G strategy in April 2019 and derived the 15 5G strategy projects. And special task force were organized in the same months and they set up a new ecosystem for 5G uh, so that all the content service and devices development are very well organized in uh, one manner. And key agendas they drive to us, uh, government will provide a test bed and deregulating all the regulations that block in 5G development and raise the funds for the uh, startups and small and medium sized uh, uh, industries and clean up all security issues. First, testbed. The government provided a testbed site in the K-City. 
that runs all the simulations and all the test sites for all the government projects, uh, including autonomous car test drive sites and things like that. And they did the um, uh, 5G related government projects there, uh, including uh, uh, B2G, B2, uh, business to government projects, uh, test site and everything. And also they use it for uh, uh, internationally authorized security service uh, test site as well. Now using the test site, all the small and medium sized uh, industry could come in and they run the, whatever they have developed there so that uh, it is well integrated into the system. Now, smart city was also uh, tested in the test bed site. Uh, they introduced um, the infrastructure so that uh, you know all the operators in industry could, could come in and test their uh, systems, especially for intelligent uh, ports and railways and things like that. So test bed is uh, being used very effectively now. Okay, second thing is uh, uh, deregulations. They try to deregulate all the regulations uh, that's blocking 5G services. Especially, uh, there are so many regulations on drones because uh, drone is a very sensitive thing. They now cleaned up most of drone regulations. Government is trying to find the uh, new 5G spectrum uh, which were which used to be blocked by regulations government also opened the uh, position system information and data which was uh, blocked by uh, privacy issues now clean the regulations and yet the privacy issues is very well protected uh, special fundraising uh, fundraising is very important, especially for uh, small and medium-sized industries and startups. Uh, they uh, funded for a special AR studio. It's a huge studio, so everybody could come and use it. And they opened uh, uh, all the information of national museums. National museums opened all the information to, you know, uh, whoever trying to develop the for, the for the service smart factories test beds there and uh, autonomous car driving uh, they funded for very accurate 3d map design which was very essential for autonomous car drive uh, digital health care service a hospital's remote diagnosis service and uh, standardizing patients information and data so that they could move around. They funded uh, uh, smart city programs as well. So these funds are very essential to the development of 5G services. Of course, security issues. They set up, a, uh, there used to be many security issues and many different levels of security here and there. Now they cleaned up the whole thing. They have a new classes of security and it's well organized and integrate security uh, classes now. There, there's pretty much uh, government involvement in the, uh, the development of 5G now, and uh, they should help them using uh, fundraisings and providing test sites and so on. When this integration works fine, the success is guaranteed. Thank you very much.